tell you what harm there is. That Simon is a boy who... He's a boy who... Well, what? He's a boy. That's enough, isn't it? <laughs> Besides that, he's nothing but a lazy loafer. He'll never amount to anything. But, Daddy, Simon's only 20. Babs, do you realize that when I was 20, your mother was supporting me and a baby? I mean, I was supporting your mother. He's nothing but a lazy nothing. He is not. He's in business for himself. He sells bubble gum. <laughs> Fine business. A mouth to mouth salesman. Now, please, let's cut the tail of the discussion. All right, but you're just not fair. I don't have to be fair. I'm your father. Charlie, I don't want to get into this battle, but why don't you think it over? Simon seems like a nice boy, and he acts like a gentleman. Mother's right. Simon's not like all the other boys. He never tries to kiss a girl. <laughs> On top of everything else, he's a dope, too. <laughs> the main thing is I don't like his face. Well, every man can't be good looking. You ought to know that. All right, so I happen to be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Just something about his face. It reminds me of a mean boss I had once back in Brooklyn. Skin Flint Griffin. That was his name. Griffin? You mean the fellow I used to run that candy factory? He, What's he got to do with all this? He hounded me every day I worked for him. Three years I slaved from in that candy factory. I was a chocolate milker. So what, Riley? Stop living in the past. Please, Peg, I can live any place I want. I'm an American citizen. <laughs> I never told you why he fired me. But what's all this got to do with Simon? He framed me. He accused me of drilling holes and five pounds of cherry chocolates and sucking a syrup out with a straw. <laughs> yes. And then I tried to get a job as a, in a licorice factory. But he called him up and blackballed me. I still don't see why I can't invite Simon over to my home for a, a purely intellectual evening. I told you, Babs. Every time I look at that Simon, I think of Griffin. And every time I think of Griffin, I get mad at Simon. So don't ever let me catch him around this house. But Jeepers, Daddy, you don't have to look at him. That's final. My head is made up. Uh, Babs, uh, let's not talk about it anymore just now, huh? Oh, all right, Mother. Hey, uh, you see what a little sensible talking can do? You all give your side of the argument, then you do what I want. That's democracy. Well, I gotta go to my union meet, Peg. I might be home a little late. Good night, Doubly. Good night, dear. Hello, Patsy. What are you doing out here so late? Oh, just, just getting some air. I was just going in. Come on, Daddy. What's the matter with you, Patsy? Why are you acting so funny? Funny? Me? Are you alone? Why do you ask that, Daddy? I don't know. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're not mad at me for me not letting you see that simple Simon. After all, I know best. Oh, Daddy, Simon's all right. I guess he is. I guess I'm just allergic to him. Whenever I look at him, I think of that mean boss I had back in Brooklyn. Then all of a sudden, my brain starts to get tight. And something snaps. Yeah, you see, just talking about it, and it happened. Wait a minute. That wasn't my brain that snapped. That was bubblegum. Babs, are you chewing bubblegum? Come into the kitchen, Daddy. I'll make you a cup of coffee. Wait a minute. Wherever there's bubblegum, there's that blowhard Simon. Where is he, Babs? Where is he? Here I am, Mr. Riley. Behind the couch. Well, as soon as my back is turned, you come sneaking in here. Come out from behind there, you couch slouch. Mr. Riley, if you'd only try to... Simon, get off of this porch. Yes, sir. I'm going. I'm going. Goodbye, Babs. Please mail me my hat. Goodbye, son. And stay off. I don't want my daughter hanging around with any 20-year-olds. And don't come back here until you're younger. <laughs> As for you, young lady, didn't I tell you not to have anything? Please don't speak to me ever again. Not ever. <laughs> I wonder what I could have brought that on. Go in there and give her a good piece of my mind. It's not natural for a girl that young to have such a grumpy nature. <laughs> I'd like to see them stop me from going in there. <laughs> Backyard, getting easier locked for my fireplace. Eucalyptus locks. They don't burn nearly as good as oak. I know, but I ain't got no choice. All you got in your backyard is eucalyptus. <laughs> my lord. 
You certainly got a nerve helping yourself to my lodge. Relax, Riley. We're next door neighbors, ain't we? You ain't gonna begrudge me making a little fire with your wood. I don't begrudge you smelling my smoke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I was a little hasty. I apologize. Apology's acceptable. <laughs> Next time, watch yourself. After all, it ain't everybody who come over and keep company with you when you're locked out of your own house. <laughs> I am not locked out. I'm out here because I want to be. And I can go in there any time I want to. And what'll you find? A couple of mad women. <laughs> it ain't fair, Riley. You spend the best years of your life slaving for them. And in return, what do you get? Hatred. <laughs> oh, you don't know what you're talking about. My wife and daughter love me. Not after tonight. And I don't blame them. You should never have done what you just done. You mean throwing that timing off this porch? Go on. Besides, it's none of your business. I'm the type of guy who don't butt in. So if you don't want my opinion, I won't give it. And in my opinion, you made a big mistake. I never make a mistake. And when I do, I'm the first one to admit it. <laughs> what did I do this time? It's the old story, Riley. I can see the headlines already. I read Father drives daughter's boyfriend away. Lonely daughter leaves home. Father stricken with remorse. Well, you're crazy. Baz would never leave home on account of a boyfriend. She loves her home. She wouldn't be the first. Poor homeless girl. Defenseless. Penniless. Drifting lower and lower. Until in the end, there's only one thing left for them. The river. You're nuts. There's no river in Los Angeles. So you'll take a bus to Mississippi. Oh, them poor love sickening girl. They go down to the river to... They... Oh, Riley. I can't say it. Stop it, Gillis. I can't stand it. If only their fathers weren't so cruel to them. I knew a girl like that once. Alone. Desperate. Friendless. She got so she didn't even want to go on living. What happened? She married me. <laughs> but not every girl can be so lucky. <laughs> you got it all wrong, Gillis. I let Babs have boyfriends. It's just that that Simon isn't good enough for my sweet Babs. Get smart, Riley. If you chase Simon away, that'll only drive the two of them closer together. Why don't you be diplomatic? You mean hit him? <laughs> oh, I don't know that. He wears glasses. <laughs> cut my hand or something. I mean, kill him off with kindness. If you throw Babs and Simon together all the time, she'll see too much of them, she'll get sick of them. Hey, that's a great idea, Gillis. That's it. That Babs is gonna see nothing but Simon, Simon, Simon. <laughs> when I'm finished, that Babs will be Simonized. <laughs> Why should he dislike Simon so? Sometimes I think... Hello, Dumplin'. Hello, Babsy. Uh, where is that sweet darling Simon? Don't tell me he's gone. <laughs> you know very well he's gone. You made him go. I made him go. Now, what gave you that idea? Riley, don't try to deny it. Bab told me what happened. Your exact words were, Simon, get off of this porch. And that's why he left? <laughs> sweet boy is oversensitive. We must have him here again sometime. I love that boy like my own son. Riley, what are you up to this time? You love Simon since when? Now, Peg, just because you don't like the boy, don't make me a party to it. Huh? I'm the type of father that don't butt in, as Babs very well knows. Well, I never. Daddy, you mean Simon can actually come here in the future? Who's talking about the future? I want him here tomorrow night for supper. I'll invite him here myself. Hand me the phone. Uh, what's the little angel's phone number? Uh, have another carrot, Simon Dolan. Well, okay, sir. Thank you kindly. They're very good for the eyes. Help you see in the dark when you take out there. Oh, Daddy. Gee, Mr. Riley, it was wonderful of you to invite me. Well, that's the way I am, Simon. Wonderful. I want you to feel that this house is your home. I might even give you a key. Oh, gee, that's well, Mr. Riley. Uh, Simon, Mr. Riley isn't really serious about the key, you know. Oh, I guess that would be going a little too far. Why not just leave the front door open? Oh, Barbara, and you thought your father didn't like me. Oh, Daddy, hard to understand sometimes. Uh, not like you, Simon. Why, I love you. <laughs> You're ambitious. You're starting small, but before long you'll be making your own chewing gum. Then the name of Vanderhopper will be on the tip of everybody's tongue. <laughs> I agree with you, sir. I have no doubt that I will be a fantastic success. But I was thinking of changing my name for business reasons. 
Vanderhopper is too long. Well, a short name is no guarantee for success, or else my father would have been a millionaire. Whenever he wrote his name, he made an X. <laughs> Originally, our family name was much longer. It was Vander Griffenhopper. Well, that is a long name, Vander Griffin. <laughs> Vander Griffenhopper. Daddy, please pass the olives. <laughs> you see, there were three brothers. My father changed his name to Vanderhopper, another brother called himself Hopper, and the third brother called himself Griffin. <laughs> yes, sir, he's in the candy business in Brooklyn. He's hiding about the olives. You were saying he's in the candy business? Uh, Simon, have you seen any good movies lately? Let's go see one now. Huh? Uh, I bet he's a nice fellow, this Uncle Griffin. Oh, you'd love him. He tells the funniest stories. Once he discovered all the cherry chocolates in the place had holes drilled in them and someone had sucked out the syrup. Simon, let's go to the movies right away. Well, before dinner, well, what's the plan? You were saying someone sucked the syrup out? Did he tell you who? Oh, he said it was some big baboon that was working for him. <laughs> My uncle said you could use this fellow as a blueprint if you wanted to build an idiot. Ha <laughs> ha! Simon, get out of this house. Dad, please. Mr. Roddy, did I say... Simon, get out of this house. But why? You said you loved me. The honeymoon is over. Get out. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. An hour after Riley threw Simon out, Bab slipped quietly out of the house, carrying a suitcase. Simon was waiting, breathless with excitement. Together, they rushed off into the darkness. And now, here they are. The man calm, yet with a certain light in his eye. The woman tormented by what she's about to do. Oh, Simon, I'm sorry I let you talk me into this. If Daddy finds out, he'll be furious. I don't care. I'm willing to take my chances, because I love you. Simon, not so loud. Someone will hear you. Let the whole world hear me. I'll shout it at the top of my voice. I love you madly. What do we do now? We go in. See the sign? <laughs> Come on, Barbara. Do you think he'll do it? Well, sure. He's going to get paid for it, isn't he? <laughs> he's coming. Good evening, Judge. My name is Simon Well, Vanderhopper. well, well, a handsome young man, blushing young woman, and a little suitcase. <laughs> I know what that means. Oh, no, you don't understand. We don't want to get married. You don't? Oh, but I thought, uh, when I saw the suitcase... Oh, that's full of samples of our greeting cards and wedding announcements. Where's <laughs> something? And here's my Penrose license. Well, uh, but why do you come to me? Well, we thought since you married so many couples... And they'd want to tell their friends about it, and we thought maybe you'd like to be our agent and take orders on commission. Well, I always like to make an extra buck. <laughs> that is, uh, help the young people along. Hey, come right into the bar. Thank you, Judge. But, Riley, you're so unreasonable. You can't just throw a boy out of the house like that. Quiet, please. We're playing this game for ten cents. <laughs> I move. simply because you don't think he's good enough for your daughter. Your father threw me out like that, didn't he? He didn't think I was good enough for you, did he? But in the end, I married you anyway, so what does that prove? That proves that sometimes a father is right. <laughs> I don't mean your father, I mean... I don't want to discuss it. Now, who can that be? <laughs> oh, good evening. Come in. Who is it, Peg? your friend, Mr. Odell. Is I indeed? Digby Odell, the friend of the undertaker. Are you telling that? Have a happy year. Thanks. You're looking fine. Very natural. Uh, park the body digger. Got the right guy for it. Ah, it feels good to sit down. I've covered a lot of ground today. Aha! Uh -huh. I move. I'm thinking of taking in a partner. Sometimes the load gets too heavy for one man to carry. <laughs> Learn to relax during work, Digger. Take a few minutes out, stretch out someplace. Oh, I don't dare. You see, I have a nearsighted assistant. <laughs> see what you mean. I move. Wait. Didn't you just move? 
Oh, Riley, that was a while back. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I got some things on my head. What's troubling you, dear friend? Being a father's no sense, Digger. I got trouble, 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 and it'll never end. Oh, yes, it will. You can take my word for that. <laughs> but I assure you, being a father is certainly a problem. Take my daughter. I don't know, somehow boys never call on her. They never come to our house. You'd think we had a skeleton in our closet. <laughs> I don't have that kind of headache with my daughter. My move. Guess I'm a little off my game tonight. Babs has got plenty of boyfriends. I just don't want her to have them. Now she's sore at me. She's in her room, sulking right now. If Babs is in her room, then she must be twins, because I just saw her on the boulevard, walking with a young man. She's out with a man? What did he look like? I couldn't see him very clearly, but as they approached me, I heard him exclaim in a loud voice, Barbara, I love you, man. <laughs> and cracked his knuckles with a loud pop. That wasn't his knuckles, that was bubble gum. She's out with that Simon, and I forbode to do it. I don't blame you. This Simon is certainly no gentleman, letting Babs carry that heavy suitcase. That's just like him, letting Babs carry it. <laughs> what if Babs doing out with a man in a suitcase? Figure they can't be. Hey, don't you get it, Riley? They're eloping. <laughs> My little Babs eloped. That weasel Simon. Oh, I sympathize with you. The boy's a cat. He should have his ears boxed. To say the very least. I can't stand here doing nothing. Digger, I gotta do something about this. Hey, hey, come here quick. Ronnie, what is it? What's the matter? What is it? Perhaps an old big son. What are you, what's he talking about? I warned you, Riley, but you wouldn't listen. When I get a hold of that Simon, I'll move. Well, Cheerio, I'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> Digger saw Babs in a suitcase. They were carrying Simon all open. Babs alone? Well, I don't believe it. Poor little Babs. I was trying to make her happy, and instead I, I made her get married. Well, we don't know that she's married, dear. Now, let's go look in her room. Hey, Riley, guess what? I went through Babs' room. She ain't there. She's gone. And the suitcase ain't there either. Oh, my heavens. Did she leave a note? No, but uh, I found this. Let me see that. Peg, listen to this. To my bride-to-be. Today, my love, you'll be my wife and live within my heart. Together, we will go through life never more to part. 25 cents. You know They're getting married. This proves it. Babs married? No, no, I'm just not going to believe it. Poor little Babs. Poor little Babs. There's one of a little bobby pin. And the thing said this morning, a little head was in it. Now it's empty. Listen, Raleigh, if Babs did do this, you drove her to it. You're to blame. Hey, I was only trying to protect her. I warned you, Raleigh, and you wouldn't listen. You know, it's just normal for a girl to have a cute boyfriend. It, it's human nature. That's what I was trying to protect her from, Peg. Human nature. I'm a failure as a father. I, I'll get it. That's probably them calling from Niagara Falls. If that Simon tries to reverse the charges, I'll... Hello? Is Simon Vanderhopper there? No, but I wish he was. Well, the girl that was with him left this phone number. Who is this? Mr. Fern. Who? Tell him, Mr. Perrin, the Justice of the Peace. The Justice of the Peace? Yes, they left their license here. They left their license? They'll need it. Tell them to pick it up. Goodbye. Hello, hello. <laughs> that was the Justice of the Peace. They left their marriage license there. Sorry, I little girl getting married. Congratulations. <laughs> they all your troubles be little. Congratulations, now. I'm tearing that license up. I'm taking that Simon out and having him a note. No, no, let's be calm about this. We'll talk to them first. And we'll talk to Simon's parents. Shh. I hear someone coming up the walk. Maybe it's them. Oh, I hope so. Quiet now, Peg. Just let me handle this Simon. I will absolutely tear his head off. Well, I said you did hit him now. You promised now, me. Now, wait a minute, Peg. Just let me give him one little punch in the nose. After all, he's my son-in-law. No, no, it's better if we discuss this thing quietly. And, Mr. Gillis, you better go. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen for my house, huh? Quiet, Peg. Gee, Barbara, I hope your father isn't home. I don't think anybody's home. The lights are all off. See, where's the light? Oh. Daddy! Good night, Babs. Wait a minute, Simon! Riley! Wait a minute, 
son. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> yes, sir. Well? Daddy, Tommy and I did something tonight. Now, now, please don't get upset, but we went and... I know what you did. I just read this card and I just spoke to the Justice of the Peace. Oh, Simon, he knows. Mr. Riley, you're not angry. Just till Christmas. <laughs> what? Till Christmas, nothing doing. I'm calling it off now. Well, we can't call it off. We already ordered the baby announcement. <laughs> The baby! Oh, my yes, sir, I don't let the grass grow under my feet. What do you mean, the baby announcement? You were just married. Married? Married? Who? What? Daddy, what are you talking about? We're just selling greeting cards and, and wedding and birth announcements. But the justice of the peace and the license and all oh, that. That's just a peddler's license. The justice of peace is one of our agents. Oh, right. And we thought... Gee, I wish Barbara would marry me. I love her. Mad. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Babs, do you mean that you didn't get married to this thing? Oh, of course not, Daddy. I'm still single. But we both development this. <laughs> Simon? I know. Get out of this house. 